Hey guys, um, I'm Will slash Liam the Viking. Um, I'm a regular contributor here at the Snorri Dev team, and today I'm going to be bringing you a video about recursion, uh, which is a really useful technique um, in programming and math, just in thinking in general. Um, so simply stated, what recursion is is basically when you have a function. Um, you can have the function call itself or express some sort of functionality in terms of itself. And I think the best way to show this is just by example. But basically it's another way of doing, um, of handling sort of like repetition when you're programming. Like one of the first thing you, things you learn in programming is like a while loop or a for loop. Um, and those are iterative approaches to doing repetitive tasks, recursion, is just another approach to doing the same thing. So I think the best way to show, or one, one good way to see recursion is in modeling uh, mathematical sequences, like the Fibonacci sequence. So I'm gonna implement a recursive, uh, recursive function for the Fibonacci sequence in Python. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the Fibonacci sequence is this sequence of numbers right here. Um, so basically each number is the sum of the two before it and the first two are one and one and then every every number after that is the sum of the first two um, so you can already see that in a recursive situation we have these two sort of pieces one of them is the recursive rule or the recursive step which is a general way that we can get um, these later terms from the ones before them. So in that case, that's just, that's just addition. Eight is the sum of three and five. Five is the sum of two and three, etc. So that's sort of where the recursion comes into it. But then there's also the base case, which is equally important when you're, and always important when you're defining a recursive function. Um, and that means that we have some initial value um, for a function so that the, the recursion, the, the loop doesn't go on forever. So if we were going to implement this in Python, we'll make a function def fib n. So this is going to return the uh, nth term in the Fibonacci sequence. Um, and we'll start with our base cases. So if you remember before, we had, I shouldn't have deleted that at all, re-add. Uh, this um, function or that that sequence right there, just so we can have some some point of reference. Um, so the base cases are one or zero. Sorry, because we're gonna say the first term is zero, the next one is one, the next one is two, because this is CS land um, and everything is zero indexed. So if n equals zero, we'll turn one. If n equals 1, we're also going to return 1. 1 is this term here. 0 is this term here. So those are our two base cases. And the reason why we have 2, you'll see, is because basically the recursive step for the Fibonacci sequence takes the two previous um, terms. But you can imagine a lot of recursive functions where you only need one base case, where each recursive call only refers to one um, thing or something like that. So this isn't a general rule that you need two base cases, sort of a special characteristic of the Fibonacci sequence. Um, but in the general case, we're going to return fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. So n minus 1 is the term before n, n minus 2 is two terms before n. And we're just going to add those the, re, the Fibonacci values for those two numbers and return that. Um, and yeah, this is this is a way of implementing the Fibonacci sequence by its definition. Um, there are much more efficient algorithms for comp, for computing Fibonacci numbers, um, but this this I chose just to show recursion in its most sort of intuitive and, and uh, natural form. So we'll do a quick test just to show that it works. For i in range 
hundred. We'll just do like ten actually. Uh, print fib i. Okay. Python test.py. Uh, see desktop. There we go. One, two, one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty one, thirty four, fifty five. And that's the Fibonacci sequence, or at least the first ten numbers of it. Um, I hope this video helped you understand recursion. Uh, maybe I'll do some more advanced um, examples of, of using recursion, like general backtracking algorithms or things like that in the future. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have any other specific comments or, or things you'd like to see explained, uh, please leave a comment below. Um, and other than that, thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys later.